Welcome to another EECS 203 video with Group B22 on Relation Definitions with Jim Rashi, Ronak Mehta, Colin Yokish, and Whitney Huang. And as always, you can refer back to noahadam.com. Relation is any property that describes a relationship between any elements of sets of relatable objects. A binary relationship specifically is a relation between two sets. If A is an element in the set A, and B is an element in the set B, then a, relation, a binary relation from A to B will be the subs, it will be a subset of A cross B. That is to say that the relation will have in as its elements um, combinations of element A and element B in that order. A relation from A to B can be expressed in a few ways. So you could write it like A, R, B, or it's sometimes written as A, B, exists in R. But they all mean the same thing, to say a relation from A to B. So an example of a real world usage of relation would be where you have two groups of cities, West Coast cities and East Coast cities. Now, um, we could say, we could declare a relation to be any, where there's a highway between those two cities. So if there's a highway from the city, that city, the city, that city, then the relation would be, um, if you wanted to find these, the relation could be written as, um, if it's west and east, could be written as C, B, because there does exist a highway from C to B, and also in the relation there would be D to A, because there exists a highway from D to A. A simple mathematical example of a relation <coughs> would be if um, we have two sets of A and B with the, with the same elements, where they have integers one through four. Now, if we want to describe a relationship as um, where A equals B plus 1, um, with these sets, we would have the items 2, 1, because um, if A is 2, then B would equal um, 1 plus 1 is 2. That's the equivalence relation. 3, 2, and 4, 3. That is our mathematical example of a relation. Relations have many properties. One of those properties is called reflexivity. A relation R on set A is called reflexive if AA in R is in R for every element A and A. What that means is if you have the set one, two, three, and you have the following relations R1, R2, and R3, you can have one, one, 2, 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, 3, 3. And you can have 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1. and 3, 3. And in relation 3, you could have 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, and 3, 3.
Now, which of these would you say would be reflexive? If you said R2, then you would be correct because it contains the sets that are the matching pairs 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3. Both R1 and R3 are missing sets out of those from the relation R. Therefore, the only reflexive relation out of R1, R2, and R3 is R2. Relation R on set A is irreflexive if for every element A in A, such that AA is not in R. That is, R is irreflexive if no element in A is related to itself. Like the property of reflexivity, you could also have a property of irreflexivity. Irreflexivity is pretty much the complete opposite of reflexivity. Given the same set, 1, 2, and 3, and then the relations R1, R2, and R3, you can have R1 equal to 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 1, and 3, 2, and you have R2 equal to 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, and 3, 3, and then you could have R3 equal to 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 1. Now, which of these would you say is irreflexive? If you said R1, then you were correct. R1 is irreflexive because it does not contain any of the pairs 1, 1, 2, 2, or 3, 3. Unlike R2 and R3, which contain 1, 1, and, 1, and 3, 3 in R2, and 2, 2 in R3, making those not irreflexive. Therefore, the only irreflexive case in this set is R1. Another great property of relations is the symmetry relation. A relation is symmetric if the objects A, B, and B, A are in the set. Now, a good example of this is um, if we have, going back to the cities example, it's clear that if you have a road going from one west coast city to another west coast city, then you're also going to have a road going from the east coast city to the west coast city. Like all major roads are, you can go one way and back. Now let's expand this to look at a relation on multiple objects. If we have a couple objects, we could call these cities, and we have different relations between them, then we can't say that this entire set is symmetric because there are only two objects which have a symmetric relation between them. To make this entire set symmetric we would have to draw arrows connecting both A to B and B to A like we said, like so. Now this relation is symmetric. Now as with reflexivity and irreflexivity, with symmetry comes anti-symmetry. A relation is anti-symmetric if A and B are in the relation, B and A are in the relation, and the only way this can occur if is if A equals B. Now let's look at an example. Let's say we have one set A with the numbers 1, 5, and 8. And we have another set B with the numbers 1, 5, and 9. If we look at, if we want to see if this is anti-symmetric along the relation less than or equal to with respect to A and B like this. Then we compare each number in A to B and see what results there are. When we compare 1 to 1, 1 is less than or equal to 1, so that is in the relation. 
1 is less than 5, so that's in the relation. And 1 is less than 9, which is also in the relation. Then we go to the next number. 5 is not less than 1, but 5 is less than or equal to 5, so that'll be in the relation. And 5 is less than or equal to 9, which is also in the relation. And last but not least, 8 is less than or equal to 9. Now, to determine if this relation is anti-symmetric, we have to look at each pair and determine if this statement right here is true for all cases. Looking at 1, 1, we know that 1 is less than or equal to 1, and 1 is less than or equal to 1. So this is anti-symmetric in itself. If we keep going down, we see that 5, 5 is, this, is very similar. And over the whole set, if anything is in itself a comma b and b comma a then we know that the whole set has to be anti-symmetric so here because everything that is less than or equal to itself is also again less than or equal to itself the entire set is so first let's go through the definition of what it means to be transitive a relation uh, set a is transitive if whenever a and b is in the relation and b and c is in the relation then A, C is also in the relation for all A, B, and C that are in A. Okay, so we're first going to go through a simple example, and we're going to see if this relation is transitive. So we're going to look at the first um, element here. And so we see that the second, the second number here is a 1. So now we're going to look for an ordered pair that also begins with a 1, and we see this. So now we know that this ordered pair should also be in the set. However, this ordered pair is not in the set, so we know that this is not transitive. So we're going to do a slightly more complicated example to see if this relation is transitive. So starting with the first ordered pair, we have 2 comma 1, so we look at the second element again, and we look for an ordered pair that starts with 1, but there are none. So then we move on to the second ordered pair, which is 3 comma 1. And once again, we look for an ordered pair that starts with 1, but we find none. So moving on to the third order pair, we look for an order pair that starts with a 2. And then we find this one. So now we're looking for to see if this relation contain, contains, the, uh, contains the ordered pair 3, comma, 1. And we see that we find it here. So, so far, this relation is transitive. So looking at the next order pair, we have 4, 1. So we look for an order pair that starts with 1, but there are none. So now we move on to the order pair 4, 2. And then we look for um, the order pair that starts with a 2. So once again, we go back to this 2, 1 pair. So now we know that if this is transitive, then this order pair should also be in the set, which it is. So now we move on to the last order pair, which is 4, 3. And we see that there are... Um, there are um, ordered pairs that have 3 as the first element, so we know that if this is transitive, we should have the ordered pairs 4, 1 and 4, 2 in the set, which we do. So we know that this relation is transitive. So we're going to look at this simple example. So if A and B is in R, then we know that A is greater than B. And if B and C is in R, then B is greater than C. So now we know that if this is transitive, then A, C should be in R. So seeing that A is greater than B and B is greater than C, then we know that A is greater than C. So we know that this relation is transitive.